We're going to tie a couple of steelhead flies today that uh, I've used an awful lot on the Salmon River and the Clearwater River here in Idaho. They're uh, fairly simple. I tie them on a number five Alex Jackson hook. We're going to bend the barb down. These are a low water style, just kind of a, a real simple design that I use with a dry line and a long leader, and uh, usually mostly in the fall. We're going to just tie us a little jam knot here. Cut that off. Now we need some ribbing material and I'm just using mylar. This mylar is gold or silver. I kind of like the silver. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it on the shank of the hook with the silver down. And I'm just going to wind it right to the point right there. Okay. And we're going to make us a little tag. When you wind this mylar, wind it uh, fairly tight. I mean, put a little tension on it because it tends to spring away from you if you don't have tension on it. And maybe just a quarter of an inch tag here. Put one wrap over, tie her off. And we're going to just leave this mylar out because it's going to continue our ribbing. Okay, now we're going to need a tail. We're just <clears throat> using a pheasant crest, a dyed pheasant crest, red pheasant crest here I'm going to use for the tail. Maybe. There we go. These dyed pheasant crests are uh, you can use just hackle too if you'd like, but they got a little sparkle to them, so I kind of like the tail tied out of this pheasant crest. And if the tail looks like it's too long, shorten her up a little bit. The tail ought to be about the length of the bend of the hook. Tie that off. Okay, now I said this fly is simple. You can use any type of dubbing you'd like, but I just like to use this real thin chenille that uh, makes a real small body, but yet it's a real durable body and it sinks really well. Pull a little of this chenille off. Tie her in. Just wrap it away from you side by side and it makes a fairly small compact body. And you're going to tie it up about to where the hook comes back in with your up eye hook here, where the reed band comes there. Tie her off. Cut her off. Nice little counter wraps with your ribbing here. Get it right down inside that chenille because this is one place this fly will <clears throat> fail is when a fish hits this ribbing and just tears it out. Steel had to have pretty sharp teeth.
Okay, let's have a little hackle. Maybe uh, there's some right there. We're going to use some purple hackle. And I believe they call this fluorescent purple. Any purple will work, but uh, this seems to work real well. Just nothing but a saddle hackle. We're going to tie it in butt first. Okay, we're going to fold this, and I'm just going to lick my fingers and just fold these fibers back as I wrap the hackle around the fly. Just a couple of wraps is plenty. Tie it off and we're going to lock it in a little. Cut it off. Okay, now I use something different than most people use, and I use a, a golden pheasant dyed black skin breast feather for the wing. And it makes a real nice uh, durable wing, which is really low silhouette. And I've had great luck with them. It's actually better than polar bear hair or deer hair, bucktail or whatever. But see, as you can see, it just makes a nice little wing, that feather right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick it in the eye. Lay it right on top. Pull it back through. Wrap it off. So actually we're kind of locking that feather in, but the feather will actually disintegrate before it will ever pull out. <clears throat> now you might wonder why I've left such a, a space in the front here, but what I'll do is I'll riffle hitch this fly a lot and actually skate it too. But it's just subsurface under the water maybe an inch to a couple of inches. And most of the time you will see the steelhead take this fly. And guess what it is? It's called a night dancer, and actually, Frank Amato, it's his uh, patented fly. But uh, I use it all the time, and it's just an excellent, excellent fly. That's the fly.